our beautiful souls who are tuning in today and welcome to 30 Minutes Exploring Coaching, a channel where world-class coaches and leaders gather to share wisdom, insights that are not only informative but transformative as well. So over the next 30 minutes, we are going to talk about coaching topics that you can bring to your daily life in terms of personal, business or even health. Today, I'm so delighted to have someone with me who are very well versed in holistic wellness and transformations. She brings a wealth of experience as a life coach, yoga instructors, and even a certified nutritionist. Well, Myra, welcome to 30 Minutes Exploring Coaching. Thank you. Right. Thank you so, so much. Honored Robert. to have you here. So, Myra, I let you have the honor to share with us and our beautiful audience out there a little bit about yourself. Let's get to know you better. Thank you, Remy. Thank you very much. And a pleasure to be here with you guys. i um, so excited to be able to share my story with so many of you. Um, so my story started about seven years ago. I'm a mom of six. And about seven years ago, um, well, actually, after having my child, I kind of felt uh, that I was kind of feeling lost a little out of, uh, I wasn't finding every day as happy as I, you know, just kind of off. So I started researching, and of course, when you start feeling like that, you you have to look in within. So I started reading, I started meditating. I, um, I read a lot about meditation. And when I started meditating, that just opened all of, a lot of doors, which led me into um, a lot of yoga, nutrition. Uh, I was feeling off because I think my, you know, my gut, my mind were not connected, mind, heart connection, and that's where all the holistic health comes in. So that was very important that I learned after all these years of reading and studying that um, if your mind and your heart are not connected, then your body is off. And if your gut and your mind are not connected, then your body is off. So it's a lot of connection in the body and the mind and the heart together. So thank you, Remy. Thank you. Before we dive in a little bit uh, deeper, I'm curious. I think a lot of mom who are listening in now are so curious. You mentioned after your feet, child, you know, and then yes. after I'm sure you're a very busy mom. You have your chores, yes. you have your work, you have a lot of things yes. on your plate. But I'm curious, how do you find time? You know, you mentioned reading, you mentioned meditating. Wow. Yes. I make it a, a priority, Remy. I get up an hour before everybody gets up, and I do at least an hour on self work. And uh, I'll meditate for half an hour, do half an hour yoga, and throughout the day, uh, either I um, do audiobooks or I will take um, two days out the week where I can take at least an hour or two for myself to read. Or uh, and a lot, a lot of times to get through my my yoga and my uh, nutrition studies, I had to do it when everybody was sleeping and was off of work. So I made time for myself, and it's really important that you do. Because uh, if mom's happy, the, ha the family's happy. So <laughs> I'm, I'm very happy that I do. Happy mom, happy family. Absolutely. <laughs> well, that's awesome. You know, it takes a lot of uh, commitment, dedication to find that half an hour or one hour of you know, doing the things for yourself. Yourself. Mm. I admire you for doing that, Myra. Thank you, Remy. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah. I, and I continue to. I continue to. I will continue my journey, uh, learning new things um, to, to perfection. I love yoga. I'm continuing <laughs> my second instructor. And um, I will keep learning. So, yeah. So, despite all those uh, activities that you're doing right now, like meditations, reading, and even taking care of your children, I would say. What brings you 
into this journey of life coaching. I'm curious to know. Wow, yeah, that's that's a big um that's that was a big one for me. Life coaching. Again, I feel I felt this connection. And um I it was myself that I needed a life coach. It just felt just like I need some guidance. I was feeling kind of down on myself. Um, I didn't have motivation. And when I ran into life coaching, I found I found a reason. A reason I friend found my purpose to help other people. And throughout all of my courses and all of my coaching and I was I was coached. <laughs> I found purpose. And it's actually a beautiful thing. It's very beautiful because you realize that um, that you are important. That you know that there are people that won't judge you, and that with just a little bit of guidance and step by step, you can get where you want to be, and realize that happiness is not on the other side of the fence, but it is through the journey, and it is a choice. And I think that's been my biggest um, my biggest learn is that happiness is through my journey. So yes. Um, Life coaching has been amazing for me for to help people um, realize I do a lot of health coaching, so for weight gain, and we focus more on the inside than on the outside, and that a lot of people have a lot of trauma because uh, either childhood or even spouse drama, um, trauma, or even after having children, we all gain weight and we, you know, so it's really important how we feel inside and we reflect on the outside. My inner world will be reflected on my outer world. Yes. Beautiful, I say. But you mentioned something very interesting. A lot of, uh, I'm sure, women out there who die after giving birth, having their first child, or even many uh, along the way, they have yeah. some kind of, they will slip into depressions. You know? Yeah. Like, uh, where do I pick up from here? You know, suddenly I was doing my very busy with my career, with this and that, suddenly I have to take a break. But after the yeah. break, wow, the graph is very hard to like, uh, what do you call that, bring the graph up. So yeah. how, can you please share like, in what way yoga especially can help yeah. person? Yeah. Oh, yoga, yoga is amazing. Um, well, my yoga experience is, is pretty deep, actually, uh, as deep as the seven chakras that we have. So after our hormones and after having children, a lot of our hormones are unbalanced, and that means our body's unbalanced. So when we go into yoga and we go into meditation, we can send healing energies to our chakras, and that also helps for balancing our mood, balancing our appetite, balancing... It just balances our body. With a balanced body, um, it's easier to um, not feel overwhelmed by work, by family, a brand new baby. Um, and, and just sending those uh, healing energies, it kind of lifts your mood as well. And it's really self-empowering. It's very self-empowering, especially for women that are like hitting depression. I necessarily didn't do yoga you know, throughout my postpartum, but n now that I know that it was, it's a big thing. I wish I would have known, and that's why I'm coaching now because I there's so much to be taught that I want to help people. I want to help women, you know, that are going through depression because postpartum. It's um, it is a real thing, and acknowledge it and help them get through it. That's my stuff. Because when you're in the depression, you don't know you're in the depression. You just know that, I don't know, I feel like this. But if there's someone to help you step by step, well then it just makes everything easier. Interesting. You mentioned the, the chakra part, okay? As a layman, yeah. you know, a normal person that don't really go deep in this kind of chakra work, how will I know that my chakra is out and how will that you know, my own, my daily life, or even my performance as a person, 
He's down to leave. Absolutely, 100%. Yes, there's each chakra. Um, we have seven chakra, chakras, and um, it's necessary to balance them out and to balance them out and sending healing messages to them and through meditation and focusing on one chakra at a time. And um, what I've been doing with my students is focus, focusing on one chakra per week. All week is the beginning of the class. So every, every class that we have, we will focus our stretches and our poses um, directly for that chakra. So it's a se we have seven week program to do all seven, seven chakras. Okay. okay, that is for let's say someone that is new, they want to like align their chakra or improve their life. But what about, mm -hmm. I'm not depressed, you know, I'm not way below the line of what I'm in like so-called, okay, I'm very good. Uh, looking forward to move forward in my life right? but it's yeah. just that I want to be oh I want to have more to up my game can yoga really like help me boost myself you know so that I can elevate my performance in life whether in my career in relationship or what oh yeah yes um, throughout the stretches and the poses they're really self-empowering when um, Somebody, well, myself, when I used to look at people doing chakra, I said, oh, well, that's so easy. That looks just like she's standing, you know, raising her hands to the sky or whatnot. And when I started learning and I just, I was putting all my hours in and just taking my first class, I said, wow, that is not easy. That is not easy. My legs were shaking. My arms were shaking. It is, it is beautiful. It is beautiful. So... What happened is after I started taking, I want to say about a month, I was going twice a week for a month, I started feeling more flexible, I wasn't as tired, I didn't, um, I just, I felt much more energy at the end of the month. I realized, oh, what's your something? It was two hours a week of yoga and, and a complete eight hours of yoga only. So it is a mood lifter, it is an energizer. It is amazing class. If I am a working a, a woman, let's say, right, working class, I my schedule are quite full and quite tight. But I'm still interested to incorporate yoga into my life so that like what yeah. you, you share just now, perhaps can help me uh, improve my mood, improve my physical well being or what? Like do I have to do it every day or like many times a week in order to see result? Or can I like just do it once a week? Will that still yield that kind of result that you're talking about? You know, um, there are many women that um, some of the classes that I do, I do online. Uh, or I give, rather give the classes online. And um, there's also programs where you can buy the online program and do it any time of the day and as many or as least times that you like. And I would recommend for a really busy mom or a really busy person that doesn't have a time, you know, a lot of time to make it to the class, um, to actually buy a program and do it online from home. And I, I would say at least two or three times a week. I would say at least two or three times a week to give your body that um, all, all of the stretching that it needs two or three times a week. That is a brilliant idea online yoga yes I kind of um I like my class I like because what happens is a lot of new people come to the class and a lot of people are very intimidated with yoga right so I'll have half of the class that's already been there and then a couple of people will you know will come in and it's sort of a whole community so you know you make friends and when you make friends there have the same interests as you well then it's inspiring it's empowering, and you want to keep doing it. And when you keep doing yoga, well, there's so many benefits. So why not? <laughs> you know. So yeah, I like the inside class, but just to get it out of the way, if you get it online and you get those stretches in, the breathing, and it is beautiful. So either way is another key point that you mentioned: community. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. If I were to do it myself, 
without any community, I can sort of like chicken out, you know, I do it when I want to. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. There's a community I think I could leverage on the like accountability of like having you as my yoga coach. You know, you say, yes, really, yes. how come you didn't turn up for today's session? Yes, oh, yes. Uh, wow, yep. Yeah, <laughs> we need the community is a brilliant idea. Now, I uh, uh, listened to coaching session. Some people share with me, we men or women, mm-hmm. yoga. They say, Remy, I've tried yoga for the past six months or almost a year, but it seems that I feel overweight. You know? okay. I still okay. face some kind of health challenges. Okay. What say you in this? What else matter other than the me being physically there for the class, exercising, doing stretching, you know? But my problem is mm-hmm. still there. What else matters from your point of view? Nutrition. Nutrition. I, I, yeah, 80, I, I feel like 80% is nutrition. What we put in our mouth and, and the times that we eat and what we're eating is very important. It's very important. Um, yeah, if we are constantly eating, our, glu- our glucose will constantly spike. And that keeps all of the weight on our body, especially when we're going through stress. We get a lot of belly food. And that just accumulates. It's just, it's in our DNA, we're human, right? So um, it's just, if you don't know what's going on, it is best that you look for, you seek help, professional help that somebody does, instead of just keeping it in, in your mind and, oh, well, I don't know what to do, or well, what should I do? I tried this, I tried that. But nutrition is definitely something very important, what we're eating. So, yes. Nutrition, that's something that a lot of people miss out. You know, me included, mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. thought that just by being getting physical and all that, I could like, you know, wipe off some of my health issues, health problems. But like what you mentioned, what put into my mouth matters. Yes. Yeah. 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 There's, you know, what you are, what you eat. That is a hundred percent the truth. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't sound. It does not sound good, but it is true. Yeah. It is true. Well, for for me, I also I'm interested to know more. Like you said, the glucose level, especially, right? For yes. for a layman, let's say, okay, me included. When you say, oh, control your glucose level, to me, it's like, is it just by controlling my sugar intake, or is it that there's more things to be considered when you mention this controlling of glucose. Please share, I'm interested to know. So, um, as far as, as my experience, um, I have um, quite a few clients that do intermittent fasting. So, after 10 to 12 hours of fasting, your body starts to um, it starts with these chemicals that um, will start burning fat the fat that's on your body. And I do uh, 16 to 18 hours intermittent fasting. It releases growth hormone, which is the hormone that keeps us young. It releases, gets rid of all of the brain cells. It gets rid of all of the funk that's in our gut because there's nothing else coming down but water. So there's nothing else it can do but release all the toxins in your body, right? Because it's not, it's not taking up the energy to digest all of the food that we keep putting in our face, putting in our face, putting in our face, right? So it starts getting rid of all of the garbage from our body. So I do 16 to 18 hours. So after that 12 hour period, those those four to six hours to make 16 to 18 hours, you're getting rid of everything that you need. So I, have, uh, I do have a client that has done up to uh, three day fasting. And after, and I, I've done up to three days, I would say after, the 20 mark period, I was no longer hungry, and I started feeling great. The only thing that was making me hungry is thinking that, oh my God, I haven't eaten, I haven't eaten, what's going to happen, what's going to happen? But we have enough protein, enough fat, enough nutrients in our body to last us forever. I mean, okay, not forever, but two months, as long as we're drinking water and keeping hydrated, and not just 
any water will keep you hydrated. Hydrated is the minerals that we need in our body. So I, I drink Kenyan water, which is full of, it's all alkaline, it's, it's hydrogen ionized water, and that is perfect. But if you don't have Kenyan water, a pinch of Celtic salt every, I want to say, 8, 12 hours, that will keep you hydrated. That has a lot of minerals in it, a lot of minerals. Salt, you mean the normal salt that you use? It's Celtic salt, no. Celtic salt. Celtic salt. Mm -hmm. It's from the sea. So the sea has all of these beautiful minerals that our bodies need. And water itself is just flushing out just everything, even our good, our good minerals. So we replenish them with um, salt. So it's better than Gatorade. Yes. I mean, <laughs> and alkaline water that you buy off the shelf has baking soda mm. it's baking I mean wow I mean yeah so Celtic salt with filter water is the best that you can do once you important thing once you are done with your fat it's very important that you do not eat um, uh, anything that sugars no sugars or carbs it is uh, it is so beneficial they have bone broth, which is really good for your intestines, to coat the intestines of the stomach, I mean, coat the stomach. Or um, I always do a salad with greens, uh, kimchi, oh. greens, kimchi, beets, berries, and beet, and um, what do you call it? Um, sorry, and sunflower seeds. Oh, sunflower seeds. And that's what I break my fast. And then I'll eat chicken, and, and I don't eat a lot of carbs, but if I'll eat carbs after I've had that, coat my stomach, then I start my day with um, food. Okay. Interesting. For Asians especially, you know, when they think of carbs, yeah. they, think of, uh, they want to you know, improve their health or taking control of diabetics, for example, they say, oh, yeah. eliminate uh, rice. How true is that? It is true. Rice is, um, yes, yes, that it's, um, it's, it's, it's important for us to have carbs, but it's better for us to have complex carbs, which comes from vegetables, because vegetables are still carbs. Um, beans are still complex carbs. White rice is in white bread, <laughs> and all of those carbs that we love so much are not beneficial. Yeah. So, for a person who has totally not much in that uh, knowledge about nutrition and all that, yes. you know, how can engaging you as a coach help me to incorporate these two like yoga, nutrition? How how do you incorporate these two into let's say a coaching sessions? Yeah. Oh well, we sit down. Um, for our consult, and I have some forms for the um, for the client to fill out before consultation, and a lot of it is asking what's the most the bother? Do you have brain fog? Do you ha have trouble sleeping? Just um, what is your what do you want your weight to be at? How active are you? Are you in the gym? Are you not in the gym? Do you are you on any medications? For number one, and um, just asking what they want. What are they looking for? And then I have to tailor the program for that person. And most of the, most of my clients, I tailor the program is a step by step. You know, do one or two um, classes of yoga a week, and we will say if you want to fast, start fasting. We'll do 12 hours, not 16 or 18 hours. We do 12 hours. And you break your fast with something healthy that is not a carb and not a sugar. So step by step with motivation, and letting letting my client know that you know, it's not going to happen overnight. This is a relationship, and it is um, we we are building a relationship, right? And I'm just guiding. You. I'm your friend. I am not here to judge you. I am not here to tell my friends about your problems because I'm here to help. 
So without judgment and with a lot of empathy, you know, realizing that it's not easy. It wasn't easy for myself. It was not easy. But it becomes a lifestyle. And that's what a lot of people don't understand. Everybody thinks they put in their head that it's a diet. So in your head, a diet can be over in seven days. It can be over in two weeks. It can be over in two days, right? It's a half, a summer diet back. But if you make a decision, and you know, a, a diet is a choice. A decision is a lifestyle. So that's that's how I try to um, help them. And not just that, but the mindset too. The mindset is very important to encourage yourself. If you look in the mirror and you say, so how are you going to have the courage to say, I'm going to stop? If you're saying bad things about yourself, you have to love yourself to take care of yourself. So I also teach them that in, along with the nutrition. It's very important what you put in your body and what comes out. So if you're saying bad things about it, you're putting bad things in. So it's, it's a holistic, it's all holistic. Oh, this a weight loss thing or trying to get you know, rid of certain weight is a chicken and egg kind of thing. Some people seem to go round and round and at the end, they come back to square one. But there's yeah. one area people say, well, uh, really I think eating disorder, you know, I can't stop eating, you know, can't control myself or that. Has yeah. a lot that to do with a person's past trauma. How true is that? That's very true. That is very true. Uh, I have um, experience with clients that are so overweight that the overweight has to be from childhood, right? And being by childhood, that means... Um, so a lot of people, you go to the doctors and they say, oh, you have diabetes, but your mom has diabetes, your dad has diabetes, so it's hereditary. You know what's hereditary in my eyes, Remy? is the habit of eating, right? Mm -hmm. So if you grow up and you, you're, you know, it, it, I'm not judging it, each is to own. But if you grow up and you all are sitting down eating fast food five times a week, or your parents are making fried food five or six times a week, well then you grow up and you think that that's normal. And you grow up and you're 10 and 12 years old and you think that it's normal to be obese, and to have diabetes or high blood pressure or even high cholesterol at that age, at that age because your parents had it and then maybe your grandparents had it. So us as adults and, and parents, we have to take responsibility for ourselves, right? And understand that whatever happened in the past, that's not me anymore. This is me too. And that's what I help my clients understand that this is you now. Whatever happened in the past, you have to leave that in the past and you have to tell yourself, I am beautiful and I am courageous. Because we are. We are very courageous. We just have to see ourselves like that. Once we start seeing ourselves as beautiful, then we start loving ourselves. And a lot of my clients, most of them, I tell them, well, if, if you have an infant and you see that your infant is overweight, are you going to feed your infant garbage knowing that you're hurting your infant? We have to treat our bodies as that's our infant. It means we have to love ourselves, right? And that's what I, I try to, um, to you know, set across to my clients. Um, of course, we build really tight relationships. And just step by step, you know, I start understanding them more. They start understanding me more. And then it becomes, um, it, it becomes really beautiful when you see people, you know, start having results. When they start having results. Not just that, Remy, but if I am, I am changing my lifestyle, I have to change the people that are around me as well. You know, if I, yes, it's very important. And that's where that phrase comes, you're allowed to outgrow the people that are around you. So, it's important. It's really hard to be around people if they're eating bad foods or drinking alcohol weekend and you're just like, so, important thing, community. So, if I want to be healthy, uh, a lot of the ladies from the from the yoga, they'll get together and afterwards they will go have a smoothie together. It's nutrition. And it's a very beautiful, it's very beautiful. 
environment matter. Uh, yes, 100%. And then you say, if I come from a childhood of, from my, my, my environment, family members or guardians or my community, most of them are into fast food, fries, yes. burgers, and all that. If I'm the one drinking smoothie, it will be very awkward. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. Having you know, this and that, carbonated drinks, you know, alcohol, I'm drinking smoothie. You know, I'll be the awkward one standing right in the middle. Uh, so that's why people say, let's not be the awkward one, let's blend in and be the norm. That's why it's so hard to... But that, that is, yes. That is not, that should not be the norm. Yeah. So how do you, as a, as a, what do you call that, a health coach or holistic coach, how can you encourage a, a layman, a person that, that what I shared just now, in this kind of environment whereby most of my surroundings are into fast food and all that, how do I break the pattern, how do I incorporate new patterns into my routine, what do you recommend? So first and most of all, I help them learn that it's a mindset. That you can be in the environment and you don't have to be part of the environment, right? You can, they can, it can be next to you. Once, um, once you start implementing, um, going to yoga and, um, eating, you know, more healthy or even just, okay, well, if they're going to have fast food, I want to make sure that I have my own and just teaching them that it is okay to be different. It is okay to love yourself. And maybe you loving yourself, maybe you can teach the people in your environment and even help. Because you can't help nobody if you don't help yourself first. Right? So helping yourself first is very important for your environment because then you can start helping others. So that's, that's the first thing. Like teaching them inner love. You know. I'm going to take care of my body, I'm going to love my body, and to have that vision in your head of what you want to look like in the next 60 days is very important as well. This is what I want to feel like in 60 days, and this is what I want to look like in 60 days. So it's, um, it's a lot of discipline, it's a lot of discipline, but it's doable. Absolutely, it is doable. People have this misconception about if I were to engage a coach, the coach is going to be hard on me and I don't like that. I don't want to have this kind of harsh community on me. I would rather take my own time, do it whenever I want to. But can you please tell us more about this misconception? How true is that? No, because in the movie, in the advertisement, people portray a coach like, Hey, one more, give me one more, give me one more. How true is that in actual reality? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. It's um, for me, it's it's a relationship that you that you you know. The only thing in the relationship is that I'm guiding you. I'm guiding you. I'm motivating you. I'm your cheerleader. I'm not. I'm not your. No, no, no I'm your cheerleader. And we celebrate each um each milestone that we reach every week. We celebrate it because it is a celebration. Every time you accomplish, even as say, I haven't drank soda all week, wow, like, really? Because I know that it's hard. So it's an actual celebration. Each milestone should be a celebration. And, and with that celebration, it starts building up character. And when you start bu building character, when you are around it, you're like, that's not me. That's not my call, and I don't need it. So I am their cheerleader, not their... <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not like that. So if I were to engage you as my fitness coach, holistic coach, you're going to be my number one cheerleader. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, Beautiful. 100%. Beautiful. Well, be mindful of the time, well, time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> so, to our beautiful souls who are listening in, tuning in today, you know, who like to know more about holistic you know, coaching, fitness, what can yoga and then life coaching. You know, what would be your key message to be to our beautiful listeners out there? Um, not to be so hard on yourself. 
Uh, I know that it, change is hard. Change is really hard. But don't look at it like that. We have to look at it as if we have we have the choice to do it, and we we have to just make the decision. And when there's still a choice for something, well, then it shouldn't be as hard to do it. If that makes sense. Be grateful and have gratitude. That say, okay, I, instead of thinking I have to go on a diet, say, oh, I can do this. I can I can go on a diet because I can. And once you start empowering yourself with, I can do it, I will do it, then the rest is up. I can do it. I can do it. Oh, wait, wait, what is it? Just do it? Yeah, it's very beautiful, you say. My, my beautiful. Awesome. So, to our listeners out there, if you, you know, no if or but anymore, I can do it. If you can do it, then get in touch with Myra, you know. Contact can be on the screen or get in touch with any one of us if you know want to know more about how life coaching, fitness coaching or holistic coaching can help you build a better life, not only in terms of relationship, career, health. If health matters, your life matters, then reach out and talk more to us. We'd love to have real conversations with you. So thank you. Thank you, Myra, for being here. Thank you, Rami. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, everybody that's here listening. Thank you so much. See you next time on 30 Minutes Exploring Coaching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.